I just cloned a $10,000 a month app in seven days without writing a single line of code. Everyone thinks you need a code or hire a dev team to build a profitable app. But in this video, I'll show you how I used one AI tool to do all the heavy lifting. Cool, right? I'll walk you through the exact steps I used to find a proven app, rebuild it using AI, connect Stripe for payments, and get it ready to make money. No tech skills needed. By the end, you'll know how to spot winning app ideas, recreate them fast, and launch with zero coding. Let's get into it. The AI tool that we're going to use is Replit. With my code Celine, you'll get a 10% discount and full access to the Replit agent. I added the link in the description below. So we're kicking things off by building a photo-based mushroom identification app from scratch. The goal is to let users upload or snap a picture of a mushroom and get instant AI-powered feedback on what species it might be. It should be simple enough for beginners to use, but polished enough to feel like a real product. You want to know how to do that? To get started, I'll describe exactly what we want Replit to create. So, all you have to write is create a photo-based mushroom identification app. The app should allow users to take a photo or upload an existing image of a mushroom and then use AI to instantly identify the species. Include a simple UI with basic navigation tabs. Then, Replit generates the app and it's named Mushroom ID. The interface is sleek and minimal with a fresh white and green color theme. The navigation tabs we asked for, such as Upload, Identify, and About, they're all there, and the layout feels responsive right out of the box. Important disclaimer though, building apps and making money online isn't easy, despite what other YouTubers are saying. So when I show you how to build an app, I'm demonstrating the technical process and potential, not guaranteeing your results. These AI tools are legit and the techniques work, but success depends on your execution, timing, and honestly, a little bit of luck. Most apps don't make money immediately and many don't make money at all. So listen up, I'm not promising you that you'll get rich or a need to quit your job. This isn't financial advice or a get rich quick scheme. I'm just showing you what's possible with these tools and what you do with that knowledge is entirely up to you. All right, so expectation set. Let's continue to build the app. So most of the core structure is already working, but right now, the app can't actually identify anything. It still needs an API key that will allow your app to connect to any advanced vision AI service, which will analyze the mushroom photos and provide species identification. Wow, I know, right? So Replit's default setup uses OpenAI, but for this build, we're switching to Gemini for image recognition. So to move forward, I'll type in a new prompt and it goes, add an AI powered mushroom recognition feature using the Gemini API to analyze images and identify mushrooms. This is the main functionality of the app. So the Replit agent replies with setup instructions and prompts us to get an API key from the Gemini section on AI.google. So once we have that, we'll paste the key, starting with Isa, into the app config. The agent takes care of the switch, replacing OpenAI with Gemini, resolving the TypeScript issues automatically, and completing the integration. Now, the app is connected to Gemini and ready to test. The interface loads properly and all the tabs are still working. Let's try uploading a photo of a fairy mushroom to see how well the recognition works. The image uploads without any problems, but the result isn't what we expected. The app fails to return any identification and an error message appears. And it says, identification failed. So it looks like we're connected, but something's still off under the hood. We'll debug that next. Since the app failed to identify the uploaded mushroom photo, I'm going to let Replit know exactly what happened. Well, that after uploading the image, the app shows an error message saying identification failed, along with a 429 error. And this typically points to a quota issue. And I'll include a reference to Gemini API documentation link that appeared in the error response, just to give the agent full context. And the goal here is to help Replit recognize the problem isn't within the app's logic, but within, but within the usage limits on the current Gemini API key so it will make the necessary adjustments. Replit analyzes the prompt and flags it as an API quota issue. 
The Gemini API key we used has already hit the free tier usage limits. And as a fix, the agent switches over to the Google Gemini 2.5 Flash model. And while that's running, the agent begins scanning and updating different components across the app. And once it's done, it confirms that both the fully functional app features and professional UI UX categories have now been polished. Time to run another test. I'll upload a photo of a fairy ring mushroom from my files to see how it performs after the update. And this time, the result loads instantly. The app successfully identifies the mushroom and shows both the scientific name and the common name. Below that, it also displays the confidence percentage, a list of key identifying characteristics, alternative possible matches, and a clear section for comprehensive safety warnings. All laid out cleanly and easy to read. So to double check, I'm going to copy the common name and look it up on Google. The result is accurate. The identification is correct. Everything is now working smoothly. So in addition to uploading an existing image, the app also includes a take photo option. And now it's time to test how well that works in real time. And using my laptop's camera, I'll hold a photo of a green spored parasol mushroom from my phone screen and snap a live image through the app. The identification runs just like before. The app instantly analyzes the photo and correctly recognizes the mushroom species. It returns all the relevant details just as accurately as it did with the upload feature. So right now, the app can identify mushrooms from photos, but it doesn't give users a way to explore or learn more on their own. So to take it a step further, we're going to add a built-in mushroom database. This will act as the knowledge base behind the app, making it easier to browse species, look up details, and compare mushrooms even without uploading a photo. We'll tell Replit that each database entry should include the scientific and common names, edibility status or whether it's edible, poisonous, or medicinal, detailed physical characteristics, habitat information, seasonal availability, and a list of similar-looking species, especially any dangerous lookalikes. So Replit begins setting it up. The agent updates the API routes to support full database functionality and creates a clean front-end interface where users can scroll through the mushroom entries. While setting it up, there are a few TypeScript errors and minor app crashes, but the agent handles them and completes the integration. Now the app has a fully functional, comprehensive mushroom database built right in, making it a much more informative tool for foragers and mushroom enthusiasts. All right. Time to test how the new Mushroom database works inside the app. A new database tab has been added to the main navigation, and it displays a list of mushroom species, each one showing the scientific name along with some basic identifying characteristics. Clicking on a specific mushroom opens up more detailed information. There's a full description of its physical traits and a separate safety tab that highlights whether the mushroom is toxic or safe. If it's poisonous, a warning icon shows up clearly. The About tab remains unchanged for now. It still only contains the general important safety notice. So to make sure the identification feature still works alongside the database, I'll try uploading a photo of a fairy ring mushroom again. The app identifies it correctly and now includes extra information like its typical habitat and blooming season pulled from the database. That said, the database is still a bit limited. I'm going to search for green spored parasol, but no results showed up yet. This is something we need to improve in the next step as we continue expanding the database. So you expanded the mushroom database, but the images didn't show up. Text info is there, but visual ID is missing. So to fix it, you sent this follow-up prompt to Replit. The additional mushroom species was successfully added but it doesn't show any image of each mushroom. Include a photo of each mushroom and the mushroom species in the database. Replit should now attach an image to each species entry and make sure they display correctly in the UI. And once that's done, you'll have a fully visual, informative mushroom database ready for users to explore and identify species more easily. The front end is now fixed, and the realistic mushroom images are finally showing up correctly in the database. Initially, SVG thumbnails weren't loading due to broken image paths. After Replit resolved that, we noticed that while SVGs worked, 
they weren't helpful for real-world ID. So, we asked for lifelike photos instead. Replit used Gemini to create realistic images and replaced the SVGs for each species. Now, every mushroom entry has a clear, accurate photo next to it. The database looks like a proper field guide. Visually helpful, polished, and ready for real-world use. The app already has an important safety notice section, but it's limited. I'm adding a first aid guide for accidental mushroom ingestion. Clear, direct, and of course, emergency friendly. I'll tell Replit to add this guide, including Don't induce vomiting unless told by a professional. Call poison control or emergency services. Stay calm, watch for symptoms like nausea, confusion, cramps, and save a mushroom sample. And note the ingestion time. Replit updates the layout, adding the guide under a new important safety warnings and emergency guide section. The steps are clear, numbered, styled in orange, and now include an emergency hotline. It's a clean, helpful upgrade. Now to make the app more useful, I'm adding a mushroom suggestions based on the user's location and season, even without a photo upload. I'll tell Replit to request location access or GPS or region and use the system time to detect the current season. And based on that, it shows mushroom commonly found in the area. If location access is denied, it defaults to seasonal suggestions. Replit creates a new suggestions tab, connects location and time detection, sets up backend routes, and fixes some TypeScript errors. Testing it, the app shows local suggestions within the current season. And when I enable location, it detects Southeast Asia and lists common mushrooms with names, seasons, and of course, safety info. Next, I ask Replit to add a global browsing option under the same tab. Users can now explore mushrooms by region with thumbnails, common names, and climate info, even without GPS. After fixing a syntax error, Replit finalizes the update. The feature works well, looks clean, and makes the app more practical and educational for everyone. How exciting. Now it's time to introduce user accounts. A proper login and sign-up system will make the app more secure and allow for personalized features like saved data and premium access down the line. It also helps organize user-specific interactions as the app continues to grow. So, I'm going to tell Replit. Now, let the users create their accounts. Include a sign-up and login. Then, Replit begins by setting up user authentication using the Replit Auth Blueprint that's already configured in the project. This allows for secure login and sign-up with OpenID Connect integration. The agent moves on to update the schema exports to support authentication, then starts modifying the storage class and creating the authentication routes. Before it can complete the setup, we need to fix an issue in the storage implementation to make sure everything connects properly. Once that's resolved, the agent updates the storage methods, fixes the lingering LSP error, and finishes wiring up the full authentication flow. It also updates the documentation so the login system is clearly reflected in the project structure. At this point, everything is fully functional. The Mushroom Identification app now has a complete and secure login and sign-up system built with Replit Auth. Now that the login and sign-up system is in place, it's time to test how it actually performs. So when the app loads without being signed in, it opens to a clean landing page that introduces all the main features. Mushroom identification, local suggestions, safety warnings, and more. So from here, I'm going to click the sign up button to start creating an account. I'll enter the required information such as name, email address, a username, and of course a password. After clicking sign in, the app grants access to the full experience. The username now appears at the top of the header along with a visible logout button. A small confirmation message pops up below, letting us know the signup was successful. Even the Google Password Manager detects the new account and offers to save the credentials. Everything in the app still works as expected. All the features that were added earlier remain fully functional after signing in. Next, I'm going to test the logout button. Clicking it logs the session out instantly and redirects straight back to the login screen. Now it's time to log back in. 
I'll enter the same username and password used during sign up, then click sign in once again. The login works perfectly. The account is recognized and access to the full app is restored without any issues. Everything from sign up to login to log out is running smoothly. The app now supports free and premium access. The free plan includes core features like photo ID, the basic mushroom database, limited recipes, ID history, and safety info. The premium plan at $29.99 per year adds faster AI detection, weekly recipes, rare species access, wallpapers, and of course, priority support. Replit also set up Stripe checkout for one-time yearly billing. Then I provide the necessary API keys. The agent integrated Stripe linked subscription status to user profiles and ensured premium features are unlocked for only paid users. The system is lightweight, the UI is clean, and payment flow is smooth. The backend confirms it's all set up. The subscription system isn't quite working yet. The premium tab shows features and pricing, but clicking upgrade to premium gets stuck loading and never reaches the Stripe payment form. So, I prompted Replit to fix it, asking for a proper redirect to Stripe checkout and error message if it fails. The agent added debugging, confirmed Stripe URLs are generating, and tweaked redirect logic. But even after the changes, the issues still remain. No redirect, no errors, just endless loading. The integration still needs deeper debugging to work reliably. The redirect issue still isn't resolved, so it's time to follow up with another prompt to try and fix the Stripe payment flow once and for all. Here's what I'll send to Replit. The subscribe to premium button still doesn't work. When I click it, the app just keeps loading and never opens the payment form. Please do the following immediately. Make sure the payment page opens, which the Stripe checkout, when the user clicks the button. Fix whatever is blocking or breaking the redirect to the Stripe payment form. If something goes wrong, show a simple message like, something went wrong, please try again later. The agent claimed that the subscription system now attempts immediate redirect to Stripe checkout and shows a fallback payment link if the automatic redirect doesn't work. Let's test it again. Clicking the upgrade to premium button still causes the same issue. The app continues to hang without opening the Stripe payment page. The redirect is still broken and the integration isn't functional yet. Stripe checkout is now fully working. Clicking upgrade to premium finally redirects it to the payment form without any issues. Using Stripe's test card, the payment goes through and premium access is instantly unlocked. A premium badge now shows on the landing page confirming the upgrade. And after testing, everything still works, yay! The photo upload, species detection, feature access, all smooth and responsive. And the app is officially complete with working payments, accurate identification, and a clean user experience. And that's a wrap on this $10,000 a month app rebuilt in just seven days using AI and Replit. The mushroom identifier now has photo upload, species detection, a full database, Stripe subscriptions, and AdSense setup with no code needed. And if you thought building apps takes months and a dev team, think again. With the right prompts, Replit handles everything. Just describe what you want and it builds it. See you in the next one.